Welcome back to Consider This. Today we're talking about youth and mission. And in the studio we have Pastor Edia Paulus. Hi, Pastor. Hello. And Pastor, you, you're a lecturer at a college as well, and you talk about mission. You know about mission. Tell us, what is mission about? Well, I guess it all starts with that you need to have a message. Mm. And that message needs to be communicated to someone mm. who does not know about what you have to share. So the message in terms for youth would be what Jesus Christ has done for you. Mm. Okay. So you have to have a personal experience with him, obviously, then. It has to start with salvation for most youth. Right. Um, for many, you will find that once they experience what it is to know Jesus Christ, they then will say, what else can I do? Mm. That mm. brings in the service element. But there are some, many youth even watching right now, who may not know the salvation part, mm. who's doing great things in service. Right. Through their service, they may experience great experiences of what it is like to work with Jesus. Yeah. Okay. So do you think as a Christian you should have both aspects, salvation and service, or can you only have the one? I think as a Christian you need to have both. Okay. Yes. You, you can't call yourself a Christian until you have come to experience and accept what Jesus has done for you and has mm. saved you from sin and the desire to just want to do wrong. Mm. But it must not stay there. Otherwise, you will just become somebody who talk about your experience. Mm -hmm. It needs to be translated into practice. And that is what we can refer to as service. Okay, so there's the two-pronged thing. They but must work together. Now, we were talking about this in the, in the first segment, the youth's mission. Is there a difference between the youth's mission and the older generation's right. mission? Or is it the same? I guess if you look at the, the biblical background to it in Joel that talks about what the role of the older people will be and the young people, then you do see a distinction. However, again, if the message is the same, mm. we are really just talking the vehicle of how that is communicated, yeah, okay. how it is practiced. You consider a young person with far more zest and energy mm -hmm. and wanting to do things who can stay up much later who has a far greater network than maybe somebody who's much older mm. and has retired from their daily work, mm. they may consider doing that mission in a far different way. Mm. Mm. However, I would think that the Bible is very clear in saying that in your youth is the most exciting time. Yeah. Yes. When you read Solomon, he talks about it to remember your creator now in the days of your youth. And then he makes a distinction. He says, before the old days come and the days when you will be fearful of heights. In other words, get involved. Mm. Do things now when you are really still excited and have blood flowing faster yes. through your veins. Yes. Right. So, but let me ask a question that, that I think of as a, as a young person. Okay, so I want to reach out. I have no car. I have no petrol, I have, I don't even, I have no food, I don't know where to start, I don't work, I don't, I'm in college, where do I begin? Okay, you begin with yourself. Okay. Um, I think it's important that you recognize life is really about two things. One is to find what is your passion in life. Mm. Mm. And then two, how can I use this passion to serve God? Mm. Mm. So starting with yourself, if you have discovered your passion you can then start to look at how can I use this to do mission. Okay. Mm. Now, it may be that your passion is at the stage where you need that resources that you were referring to. And then you need to maybe do something else until such time mm. when you can be maybe more mobile in order to get to people. But that should not limit you mm. because you can network with others right. who have the same passion as right. you. For example, they, you may love children, mm. but you can't necessarily start a, a full-time ministry to children. And so what do you do? You connect with those who are already doing that okay. and you share some of your passion, learn from them. And in that way, you empower yourself until such time mm. that you are able and by the means to do it by yourself. Okay. Okay. Now, Pastor, I'm... Um, like we spoke now, sometimes it's not, it's not easy to do it if you don't have the monetary funds or that's what we think. But then sometimes that's not an issue. Sometimes say now I'm a young person at a secular university mm. and I want to I wanna reach out. I want to be a witness. I want to have a mission in my life. But then sometimes just saying that you're a Christian can be offensive to other people. Yeah. How would you say, mm. how can I do that? How can I still be an effective witness without offending people? Or right. do you... I mean, should you care about offending people? How should you go mm. about 
Yeah, and that. I, I think it's very important what you mentioned. It is very important to be sensitive to the needs of others. Mm. And if you use that as your starting point, you will then focus and consider what you may perceive to be the needs of others. In other words, it's not about me. It's not trying to see, well, how can I best do this, but to say, how is that person? Mm. How can they be better empowered or assisted? And when you come, remember, you don't necessarily have to always say, I'm a Christian. Mm. Some areas and lines of service are such that it's far more powerful to do than to say. Right. Okay. And they may then want to know, why are you doing this? Mm. Why are you so different? Mm. I, I noticed the young person that somehow the way you approach life and do things, it seems that there's something else that motivates you. Right. That opens the door for you mm. to share what your message is and also mm. who you really are most passionate about, mm. which should be Jesus Christ. Yeah. Yeah. So it seems to me um, anybody can really do mission as young people. Everybody, we're exhorted to go out and just tell people about Christ, but we necessarily don't have to know everything about the Bible. And because sometimes we yeah. feel, oh, I don't know everything, or what if they ask me a question I don't know, or and what if I'm confronted with something right. that will kind of scare me? It seems yeah. that you could, you should yeah. just be an effective witness and maybe just serve. Yeah, and also remember, we are all at different stages of the Christian growth. There are those who start out and are very excited, but lack the, the resources, mm -hmm. but they have the zeal. Mm. And then you have others again who may have all the resources, mm. but they're not quite um, mm. too excited mm. about what they believe. So mm. they may find that I would like to um, do something. And that why, that's why I come back to networking. Um, connect with somebody else who mm. then team up with you or a group. And in that way, we find that you will find your niche in which you can best serve mm. and do a, and be a great witness for God. Mm. Pastor, if, if you had to boil it down to, say, just a few aspects, how should the youth go out and do service in, in, in a nutshell? Well, I think it starts with where you are. Okay, you don't necessarily have to go overseas in order to do mission and to serve. Start where you are. Look at the place, the area, whether it's an institution or where you study or your neighborhood where you're living and start where you are. Then look just a little beyond yourself, your own needs and see there's somebody else in my street, in the area where I live. Yeah. How can I make a difference? Okay. And then move your passion, your talents in that line so that you can connect that person and help them to really have a more meaningful life and to add value to their lives. So to mm. focus on other people. That's it. There we go, guys. There we see that youth's mission, all of us can be a part of a mission. All of us are a part of a mission, the mission to take Christ to the world. When we come back after the break, we will discuss more about the mission that we have and how we can be effective witnesses. Family, global vision, and a holistic approach to thinking and living, unlike any other media source on the planet. Welcome to Hope Channel. Every hour of every day, any family member can watch. Hope is educational, inspirational, focusing on lifestyle and health, and offering programs for young and old alike that teach culture, positive values, and spirituality. It takes a global network to be in touch with planet Earth's global community. Hope broadcasts everywhere in the world with seven global channels and we're affiliated with more than 50 media production centers on six continents. The result? Hope Channel provides a diverse cultural programming mix in many of the world's major languages. Hope is more than great television. It's also part of an international conduit of educational institutions, churches, retail outlets, and hospitals that represent a solid economic base. And Hope Channel viewers are loyal, encouraging friends and neighbors to watch. Why? Hope viewers believe that Hope Channel not only enhances living, but changes lives through its compelling lineup of programs. Documentaries, taking your subscribers around the world and back through time, visiting places where history was made. Fascinating biographies that open up the lives and times of people who made a difference in society. Travel programs that transport the viewer around the world, demonstrating how people work together to make a better planet. 
Inspirational programming challenges viewers to experience the joy of discovering faith values and offering spirituality as an important part of a balanced lifestyle. Health and lifestyle programs teach disease prevention and make healthy living simple and attractive. Hope Channel programs provide invaluable support for developing healthy relationships and strong communities. Diverse and positive programming. A global infrastructure and network. A commitment to family-friendly programming 24 hours a day, 7 days a week. This is Hope Channel, your source for quality of life programming.